Welcome everybody, Doug Scockle here. I want to thank our viewers and subscribers to our YouTube channel. Uh, just last July, uh, 11 months ago, we uh, had our first uh, video of the Triangle Zone offense. And since we've added several more videos, we're 11 months down the road now. And, and uh, we've had just a tremendous response, over 51,000 views. Uh, all uh, 50 states are represented. We've uh, heard from coaches from over 130 countries. Uh, and it's generated a lot of emails uh, with a lot of questions. And the frequent question we get is uh, requesting help uh, for, you know, what do you do against a 1-2-2 two, two, or a 3-2 zone? And as you already know, I really like the triangle zone offense, and I use it against all defenses, including a 1-2-2 two, two, and a 3-2. Nonetheless, sometimes there's a unique pattern or scheme uh, that's highly effective against a specific defense. Or maybe it just simply fits your personnel a little bit better. So tonight we're going to take a look at a unique attack uh, that's used against the 1-2-2 the two, two, or the 3-2 zone that supplements our triangle zone offense. And so we're going to explore, you know, we'll explore that and, and it's an alternative offense. It's extremely simple, easy to install, and yet it's very effective. So without further delay, let's go on down to the basketball court and we'll start working with our players. All right, the uh, offense that we're talking about here, we call offset. And I think you can see why we call it an offset. We really would have a balanced formation, except that number three unbalances that or offsets that formation. And that's where it gets its name from. All right, the positions, we've got two low posts, as you can see. We've got two guards up front, and then number three is on the wing. But number three is called a rover because he's going to rove all, all over the place. And, and uh, uh, I'll, I'll talk him through his cuts and where he's going to go. Uh, but that's a starting position for him, pretty typical spart uh, uh, starting position for him is uh, in that uh, position right there. Now, I mentioned the simplicity. The guards, those two guards and those two posts, basically just stay where they're at uh, for the most part. And now, uh, each one has position requirements. I'll talk about those here real quickly. The posts, uh, they have the, the things that we want from the posts, their options are. Uh, we want that to make sure that you post on a defender. Uh, not on air. And so there's three possibilities here. Uh, Carlos, we're just going to get ahead of ourselves a little bit, put you down on the baseline right there, and uh, go ahead and throw the ball to Carlos. Get lower yet, Carlos. There you go, number three. All right, so now, Jamie, walk that bottom defender out to cover Carlos. Okay, and if, Carlos, even a little bit further toward the baseline for me. Okay, and bring the defender with. All right, so now, what number four has to be aware of, going back in that low post area, is where is the next defender going to come from? Uh, and it could be typically one of three. It could be this ball side wing, and we're not going to walk it down. This ball side wing on the elbow uh, could be the one that comes down and covers. It could be the, uh, the, the post defender on the back side moves across and covers. And sometimes people play what I call yo-yo defense, where the point guard, and Emily, go ahead and grab that point guard defender. That point guard defender is all over the place. Yo-yo's back and forth. Here it comes down and covers the post, and the ball gets thrown back out front. And Emily, go ahead and walk it out front. So, the, so no, bring it with you. Yep. So again, the ball gets thrown out front, and the yo-yo player comes on back out here. So number four, and of course, if the ball goes their side. Five's got the same thing. They've got to know who uh, is going to be the next defender, and they've got to they've got to seal that person off and, and create a, you know an advantage for them. Okay, bring the ball uh, back out to Emily, and we'll talk about the guard spots. Carl's uh, move those uh, barriers back in place. Carl's come back to the wing for right now. All right. Uh, and we'll talk about some of the other th things the posts can do. The posts at any time, and usually it would be the opposite post, in this case number five, anytime she sees an opportunity to flash into the middle of the zone, she's going to punch in there, and of course we would uh, you know, get her the ball, and, and uh, she's got a chance for a score. Uh, number two, uh, Brody could uh, slide uh, along the three-point line or toward the basket so she's got possibility of a shot could drop it off to number four could hit uh, number two Brody uh, as he's sliding along and probably he'd slide even deeper uh, you know so that uh, that bottom defender would be the one that would probably try to guard him all right so that's a possibility uh, the opposite post can flash and that guard could hit him bring the ball back to Emily Brody come on back to your guard spot um, the other thing that we can do is let's throw the ball to Carlos, and the opposite post runs what we call a sneak. Number five runs a sneak, which means she's coming under. Come on over to the short corner, ball side short corner, okay? And so again, now she's at that short corner, and uh, we've you know we've created a little triangle. 
which you know how much uh, I like the triangle on attacking defenses and so on. We create a little triangle opportunity right here. And so I think you can see if you've studied the triangle offense, all the different possibilities that are here. So that's a sneak option. And then go ahead and go back to your spots, guys. The other thing that we do is that on occasion, go ahead and throw it to Emily. And Emily throws to Brody number two. And Carlos is running some kind of a cut. And we'll get to what his cuts are. Maybe he runs a stay and he just stays where he is. And to help us in ball, in ball movement sometimes, number four would fly straight out to the three-point line. We call this a step up. See, number five. Number five would fly straight out to the three-point line. We'd go ahead and pass to her. And it's just a way to improve ball, uh, 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 you know, moving the ball. So we don't stagnate. We're just throwing it back and forth between number one and two. So that's a possibility of five. And Brody could call it any time. He'd say, step out. And she would uh, run out quickly uh, to, you know, toward the three-point line. We'd get her the ball and, and help spread the defense and occupy them a little bit. So, again, a step-out option is available for either one of those kids. And uh, we'll get back to that later. Go ahead and bring the ball back. Now we're going to talk about the guard options. Oh, we have one other possibility. We call this baseline posts. I want both of you posts to go down just outside the lane, almost out of bounds. Go down, down the lane, almost out of bounds right there. Now, uh... We do this sometimes because it really creates a problem for those bottom two defenders. When our two posts are up, it's e real easy for them to, they, they, they see them, they're in contact with them and everything. Now what do they do? How do you defend that? Think about that. So what happens is both of them tend to drop lower. Both those uh, barriers would drop lower. Don't do it, but they would drop lower. And then the thing is because those offensive players are behind them, they start head turning a lot. And the next thing you know, they've lost track of number three, who gets in between the layers of the zone right there and has a little bigger space to operate on. So again, we just call this baseline post. It's a nice little change of pace, and uh, uh, just you know, coaches play around with that. You'd be surprised uh, uh, the, the problems that it creates. And of course, uh, you know, if they lose vision at any time, one of those kids could flash, uh, you know, could cut in cut toward the basket and punch up into the middle of the lane. Go ahead and do that, uh, Jamie, right now. Go toward the basket and then, and then punch up into the lane right in there. Well, she's come from behind those defenders, and they lost vision of her for a moment, and so you can see that she could turn around and hit a bounce pass to five coming to the bucket. Uh, or three again. Uh, Carlos could be going toward short corner. And uh, so, you know, that's some possibilities. All right, so, throw, so those are the post possibilities. Now throw the ball back out front. Carlos again, the rover at the wing, and we'll get to your duties here in a minute. The guard options are this. Uh, one and two are our principal ball handlers and passers. They, we don't want them to hold the ball for, you know, a long period of time. We don't want the ball to stick uh, with those guys. And uh, they can uh, simply, you know, they can play catch. They can throw the ball back and forth. They don't, they're not necessarily glued to that area. They could drift if they saw you know, an opening or a spot. And sometimes one of those kids, uh, for example, if uh, the ball went to Carlos right now, uh, sometimes uh, number two might say, you know what, is that wing, Emily walk that wing defender out to Carlos, yeah, right there. And so Brody number two says, oh man, I see, uh, we got something going right here. I could punch in here to the foul line area, get the ball and and really make some noise in that situation. So that's one of the things that the guards can do. But they operate from a home base, and they spend most of their time back up there in their home base positions. But uh, again, uh, you know, some real possibilities for scoring right there. Um, we talk to the guards about making passes that make sense in, in respect to where the rover is. Uh, but again, if we get stuck somewhere, we can always ask a post to do a step out. Let's say again, Carlos, we get to his... Uh, responsibilities in a moment. Uh, he chose to stay on this side, and uh, uh, so we could, uh, you know, again, we could have number five step out. If Carlos was on the other side of the floor and Emily had the ball number one here, she could ask four to do a step out, uh, you know, toward the uh, three point line. Uh, go ahead and stay, yeah, put that back in and come back out, Carlos. All right, so um, I, I like for our uh, guards to use pass fakes and throw opposites. So go ahead and fake to Brody. Give me a, a real quick hard fake. Comes back to Carlos. I like double pass fakes where she gets the ball. She makes a hard pass fake to Brody. Turns around, makes a hard pass fake, and then comes back to Brody. Again, uh, you can move the defense. The defense will move uh, on those pass fakes. And, uh, we, you know, again, you can get them out of position that way. Uh, they're always, these guards are ready to, for a catch and shoot. 
And so they want to hunt that three-point line and, and uh, be prepared to, to shoot. They can dribble penetrate, but in reality, uh, with, uh, you know, with three defenders guarding those two, so to speak, uh, they're going to find themselves, uh, if they penetrate, and, and they should at times, they're going to dish the ball off. It's probably not going to produce anything uh, you know, for the person that's dribbling. And uh, the other thing uh, uh, that can happen is, uh, let's say that uh, the defense is doing something to stop the, the pass from two to one right now. And so, Brody, you can simply dribble at Emily. And Emily, you run an inside cut to replace Brody. So you run inside the zone, now curl back. Brody dribbles on a cross. And uh, again, he could you know, throw to three. He could look for a, a, a post player that's, post player that's punching into the lane. He can throw back to Emily now. Uh, but that, again, if you can't pass somewhere, dribble there, and that person can just run a little banana inside cut. Now I'm going to talk to you about the rover options. All right, and so in, in the rover options, I'll get my page open here, bear with me. I'm really having a struggle here. All right, so we've got these possibilities. Uh, uh, Carlos, uh, in this situation, let's, say, let's give him the ball. All right. And, of course, he, uh, he's looking for number four or five could possibly punch in there. Five could also come on uh, over here for a sneak. Don't do any of those, but those are the possibilities. <laughs> Sorry, Sandra. <laughs> and, of course, like we said, Brody could punch in there if he sees, uh, you know, an opportunity as well. All right, so Carlos gets rid of the ball, and they move the ball to the other side. So we get to one over to two. And Carlos, uh, this is not the principal thing that he's going to do, but he could just stay here. I mean, that is one of the possibilities. He could just stay here. Uh, but uh, probably not uh, likely to happen. What we want him to do is he has, uh, he's got some choices here, and, and one of them is to want, run what we call a mid-route. And in a mid-route, he's going to seek the, the layer between, uh, he's going to seek, seek that, uh, that opening in the zone, that layer between the, the, the top and the, and the bottom, those four. So, Carlos, you made that pass. Go ahead and cut below the wing. Go ahead and cut below the wing, but straight across like you're going to go to the other wing, but you're just below this wing, okay? And I'll cut below him, cut on the back side, my side, okay. Now, one possibility, boom, is we could hit him right there. And he has, one of the things that he can do here is to simply locate on the free throw line for a moment, and uh, we just call this a free throw line stay, and he could operate, and we're in that kind of like that tight uh, a uh, little formation that if you've seen the one three one zone uh, offense video, uh, the same thing. But if not, go ahead and give the ball to Brody and uh, go ahead and continue on across, duck behind that, uh, that wing and goes on to the other wing. Now, one of the problems you could have here is that while we're waiting for Carlos to get over there, Brody's been holding the ball for quite a bit. So, uh, again, there's always the possibility that, again, number four could be punching into the lane. Uh, but if not, just to, just to buy the time that we want, uh, he could go ahead and throw the ball back to Emily. If she wanted to step out from four, she could call for it. Doesn't need to. Five could punch in right now. But, and now Emily can turn around and throw it back to Brody or skip it to three, either one. Okay, and now we're on the other side in that situation. All right, now, the other thing that we can do is Carlos makes a pass, and he comes in to the middle of the, def the defense and returns to where he came from. Okay? So this time he didn't come across. He, you know, he... Uh, uh, just simply return to where he came from. So that's a return route. Uh, now this time he comes in to that area again. Go ahead, Carlos, make your cut in there. This time he goes between the posts, goes down between the posts. Okay? okay but he would turn and face, he would, he would turn and face going in that direction. He'd be going this way, Carlos. He'd be running down in the, between the posts, right between those posts. Stop. Now, He's got a choice right here. He can go over or under these posts. He could hook out, go ahead and hook out behind number five and on the baseline, the short corner, or on out right there. Okay, so we give him the ball there, and we'd have a chance for a shot, drive, or a pass inside. Go ahead and give the ball back, come back into the middle of the lane. He could choose to come on, on this side instead. He comes under a number four, and Brody you know, swings the ball. And he comes out short corner or whatever it is. We got the same thing on that side, okay? And then uh, Carlos, walk up here to the wing with the ball right now. Let's say that was your starting position. And this time he passes to number one and simply, we call this a baseline drift. He simply goes straight down uh, to above the short. Yes, straight down. He's going to function. He's going to go down to there. Well, here's what's happened. When he was up here at the wing, 
He was going to have that wing defender. Come on back up here real quick. We'll just show the coaches that. Emily walked the wing defender over to Carlos real quick, please. Throwing the ball. Throwing the ball and walked the wing defender over. Okay. And so uh, Carlos has the ball, and Emily, go ahead and grab it because you're going to return it to that position anyway. Go ahead and return it. And Carlos, you return the ball up here to number one. And now run your baseline drift. Emily, give us a ball fake to give us a ball fake over there. And now we come back. Well, now uh, number three has placed that defense in a in a bit of a quandary because a moment ago he's guarded by the wing, but now he's so low that bottom defender uh, who may go to sleep. Uh, and, and by the way, there is one other thing I forgot to mention. It's one other thing the post players can do: throw the ball to Brody. Stay there, Carlos. And I want uh, number four. I want you to turn around and flare screen that bottom defender. Okay, turn around so your back is to Carlos. So, uh, Brody, you could either throw to Emily or you could throw a direct. Uh, well, I'll throw to Emily because we want to get that wing defender coming up a little bit. And now you throw. Okay, if that's the person that's trying to cover. And, of course, uh, once that happens, uh, go ahead and turn around, walk that defender, number four, out to Carlos. Walk it out to, to Carlos. So that they, they try to get around your screen. Go back in, number four. And now, so you would flare screen and then look to see who you're going to seal. You know, where's the, what defender's coming down? Now, you'd find that one, and we would seal that person off to, uh, you know, give you that inside uh, possibility. Of course, Carlos, could, you know, depending on which side the defender came out on, could drive. He could have driven baseline. Go ahead and just give me a couple dribbles. Back it up. Or he could drive you know, going in this direction right in here. And get, okay, take another couple dribbles in there. And he's not a little higher, Carlos, this way. Yeah, and then Jamie's going to be low, and again, you know, some defender's going to come, and, and he could drop the ball off to number four down there. Uh, maybe there's a lot of sink on the other side, and number two is open for a little diagonal pass across there. Okay? All right, so uh, uh, go ahead and move the, the barriers back into position. Give the ball back to uh, uh, Emily at number one spot. Carlos, go ahead and go down on the baseline now. So here's another starting position, and a little bit wider, maybe even all the way out three-point line, possibly. Yeah. So you're gonna, now he's going to work a different route. He's going to work the area below the post players. So again, he can he can flow from the mid route to the baseline route and back. He can stay on one area. Okay. So he's got a lot of flexibility. And again, he's got same options that he had before on uh, uh, as as you know when he was up here at the, this wing position, that mid route. Uh, he could run a stay. Uh, he can run the he can run the baseline. and go to the other side. Uh, so he, he, go ahead, he, go ahead and just run run the baseline. He goes to the other side, all right. And again, the ball is going to move accordingly. And now this time he 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 runs he runs into the middle or runs uh, the baseline behind the post and returns to where he just came from. Goes back where he just came from right there. Runs a return route. He can now he could also do this. He could uh, go ahead and pass the ball out to uh, Brody number two over to number one. You could run at number five and then punch into the lane right here. He can come under her or over the top of her, back up and take the over route this time. This time he, he came and he, he went over and punches into the middle. Doesn't get it. He, can, he could come up and, and step and stay on a free throw line. He could come on out to the wing. He could duck behind those posts and go to the baseline. In other words, he, he's, he's the rover. He can go anywhere that you know, he wants to go. And then those guards are going to move the ball accordingly. And our posts are always looking for flare screen possibilities and the possibility of you know, the opposite to post punching into uh, uh, that middle area. And sometimes, you see number one's got the ball right here, Emily. And sometimes number four, when the ball, let's get, get to Brody real quick. And now to Emily, and on that pass, punch into the, right up into the middle, number four. Okay, so you all of a sudden, yeah, you punch into the middle of the lane. Okay, so your defender had been expecting you to stay, stay, stay down there, number four, and this time you cross him up and, and you punch up into that area, all right? So again, now the other thing you can do is, uh, Carlos, as you got the ball on the baseline right down here, Jamie returned to your post spot right there. He returns the ball to Emily and drifts up to the wing. Just drift straight up to the wing. And so he's changed floor locations. Well, again, by him, all that movement that he's got, I mean, it's just amazing the stuff that you can get off of this thing. And you can get the ball inside of this 1 2 2 or a 3 2 uh, pretty easily with this stuff. The last thing I'm going to show you is what we call flash and float. So on this one, go down the baseline, uh, Carlos. Actually, stay right where you are. And we're going to do this. Um, uh, go ahead, Emily, throw the ball to two. 
And Carlos, you go, you take, uh, go between the, that, you know, there's a, you know, we have a square there with those four barriers right there. Go right into the center of the, those barriers. Now come up the free throw line. Okay? Okay, so come up the free throw line and come straight up beyond the top of the circle. Beyond the top of the circle. And a little further, a little further, further up so you can be able to catch the ball. Throw it to him. And now these wings, we call this flash and float. We call flash and float. He flashes. He goes into the, into the defense, flashes up, and these wings are going to go all the way to the baseline. They're going to go all the way to the baseline. Now, what you, uh, and, and a little bit wider probably, Brody. Okay? You can probably set up, you know, a three ball situation. Well, now you've got a tremendous uh, stress on the back end of that zone on how they're going to get this thing covered. The one thing you have to be a little bit careful of, number three has to be aware of, is that there's three people out here and only one of him, and, and uh, we are kind of a little bit vulnerable to a uh, fast break situation. So let's say he threw the ball to number three down here. Go ahead and throw to number three. I'm sorry, he three throws to number one in the corner. Long day. All right, now you're back to Rover, so you can come punch right down the middle of the lane. Brody, you're going to come back out to your guard spot because we chose that. Uh, you know, we chose that one. Emily, you could make a pass to anybody. You could dribble out towards your guard position if we don't have anything uh, going. So go ahead and dribble out to your guard position right into here. As she's doing that, she gets to about that position. Carlos could punch in behind. And then you see some of the possibilities right here. So keep going on out, Emily, to your guard spot. So we call that flash and float. So again, uh, if you really look at it, there, it, there's a lot of stuff going on. But if you look at each individual position, each one of those kids only has two, three, maybe four things. And they're pretty simple and they're kind of obvious kinds of things. So this will give you a little bit of an idea of uh, what you might be able to do to uh, really put some stress uh, on a 1-2-2 two, two, or 3-2 zone and get some of those easy scores. And again, you'll get some good rebounding position out of it. It's a nice change of pace uh, uh, that I like to occasionally bring out to attack the 1-2-2 two, two, or 3-2 zone.